This video is being brought to you by Holmes Heating and Cooling LLC and Global Integrity Finance. I'll be talking more about those companies here in just a little bit. Good morning, everybody. It is October the 16th and it is my first morning hunt of the year. I'm gonna say that again. It's October the 16th and it's my first morning hunt of the year for multiple reasons. Number one being I've just been really busy. Number two, it's been really hot and dry. No buck activity in the daytime, but today, it is 40 degrees, northwest winds. Oh, I'm pumped up, I'm excited. Don't have any like real shooters making any daytime mistakes yet, but I do have this big coal buck, this big old six point. And Mr. Coal Buck, if you show up, I'm going to kill you. There's gonna be bloodshed, hope he shows up. If he don't show up, I'll smack a slick head, I don't care. I just wanna kill something. We're gonna see, uh, we're gonna get in the tree. It'll be about 30 minutes before I get in the tree, so. Like true Shane Ford fashion, I did oversleep, but it'll be fine. Feeder don't go off till seven, that's all I'm worried about. I'll see y'all when we get in the tree. Stay tuned. low. Well, holy crap. Okay, so I know I haven't done an interview yet. That's because since 645, I've had deer all over me. The feeder goes off at seven, right? So I'm like, okay, they won't be in here till 715. They're in here waiting on it at 645. My, my bow is at the bottom of the tree. Just now got on, I don't even have my GoPro set up. 
I have my main camera set up, luckily. I had just got it set up, and the, the call buck that I was talking about this morning, the big six, walks in here, but my bow's on the freaking ground, and then lo and behold, six more does, or five more does walk in here, and so I've got freaking six sets of eyes on me, trying to pull my bow up in a tree, somehow, by the grace of God, managed to do it, and, by, and when I do it, another buck comes from behind me. I don't know if you, you probably never, y'all probably never saw him. Yeah, you did. I got footage of him. He come in and just blew everything up. I was doing fine. And then everybody started looking at him, which he was in my direction. So everybody started looking at me. So the two bucks go behind me and make scrapes and start grunting at each other. And I think I heard a snort wheeze or something like that. They finally calm down. The smaller one comes to the feeder. The bigger one comes behind him. And I think my shot was good. It looked good. I might have to play it back on camera. I see my knock. He jumped like he got hit pretty good, and he was quartering away pretty hard, maybe a little bit too hard. Maybe I should have waited, but he looked like he was stumbling as he was running off, so I don't know. We'll see, I guess. That was freaking nuts. It's I don't even know if it's 730. I don't even know where my phone is. I'm fixing to get down and look at my arrow because I either heart shot him or he's alive. 738. And I've seen eight deer and shot one at one we'll see if i shot it i'm fixing this to get down because i that shot scared every deer off from here to freaking still well so fixing to get down look at my arrow judging by what my arrow says i guess we'll figure it out then i tell you what you need to do you need to let me film me and say hey listen we're on a youth hunt and i'm taking my son on this youth hunt <laughs> This is why I don't ever invite him to film to <laughs> film with me. So I get out of the tree. We're fixing to look at the. Uh, we've already looked at the arrow, but um, we're just fixing to see how this goes. Uh, I didn't see him fall, which concerns me. But I did walk about 20 yards, and there is good blood. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's got good blood on the air. I think it came out the bottom. Oh, it did. If you shot that high, so you're right there and you're going to speak for the slam that came out. Yeah, it came out of that too. So where do you think, where do you, he's quartering away this way? He's quartering away hard. Yeah, he was quartering away. When I, when I drew back, he was actually broadside. And as soon as I got to full draw, he quartered away hard. He quartered away this, he was looking. right behind a ridge? Yeah. Yeah, he's probably right. See, right off the bat, he's sitting up. He stopped right here. It's good blood. You hit a good vein somewhere. Because he's going to bleed good. That's a good, yeah, but that's a good bunch of blood there. Y'all take a picture of that, if you get it? Yeah. In the sand, sunlight. Get the sunlight. All right, guys. Is my camera dirty? Or is it just a screen? Oh, it's just a scream. All right, guys. Um, Dad and I trailed good blood for about a hundred yards. Even found even found a spot where he bedded down, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because normally when a deer beds down like that, they don't have a reason to get up unless you make them get up, unless you bump them. But I can't imagine bumping him because I didn't hardly go very far so I don't know the good thing is we got good blood um, trailed him for 100 yards and once we didn't find him within 100 yards I hung my orange hat up and um, we're gonna eat breakfast give him a couple hours and go back and see if we can find him dad thinks we'll find him I've watched the shot over probably at least 50 times um, what I think happened was when I drew back 
he was, you know, slightly quartering away, which is what you want. And then as I went to take my shot, he turned and quartered away even worse to where it was almost an impossible shot. And I probably should have waited till he turned back towards me, but I didn't. I went ahead and shot and judging by the arrow and it's hard to tell because I had my camera on the wrong setting, had it on 24 frames. I didn't want it on 24 frames. I wanted it on 60 frames so I could slow it down. But judging by what I can see, I think it hit him good and it came out the bottom because there's a lot of white hair where I, where the arrow was. So I don't know. We'll, we'll find out here in a little bit, I guess. So stay with us. What's up guys? Hope you guys are enjoying the video up to this point. We wanted to stop right here, number one, and say thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. But the main reason we wanna stop right here is to say thank you to our generous sponsors for today's video. Sponsor number one, Holmes Heating and Cooling LLC, ran by none other than Mr. Heath Holmes himself, owner and operator. He's a really good friend of mine, uh, but I'm not just doing this sponsorship just because he's a good friend of mine. I'm doing this sponsorship because he's one of the hardest working guys I know. And I know for a fact that if you have trouble with your heater this winter, or if you start having trouble with your air conditioner next spring or next summer he's the guy that you need to call 918-575-4107 he does commercial he does residential he does it all so if you have trouble with anything or if you're building a new house and you need a quote on uh, getting your hvac needs holler at heath 918-575-4107 and i promise you he will get you fixed up and last but definitely not least sponsor number two global integrity finance these guys are a private equity lending firm and they're all about helping you as a real estate investor accomplish your dreams. So if you're trying to get your hands on some commercial properties or even residential properties, be sure and check out Global Integrity Finance. You can check them out at their website, globalintegritytyfinance.com. Great company, great people. And if you're a real estate investor and you need some upfront cash, give these guys a call or check them out at their website. Once again, globalintegritytyfinance.com. I promise you, you will not regret using them. That's our sponsors for today. We wanted to say thank you to those guys. Now let's get on with the video. Yeah. How big was it? He looked like. I think we just jumped him. No, we jumped him just now. Didn't know if it was him or not. Then we come down here and we find this bed. It's got blood all in it. No idea where dad's at. But our chances of finding this deer just went. So update, trailed him for about 300 yards. And then we jumped him just a while ago. And that's what you saw earlier with the bed. So um, we don't have no choice but to stop what we're doing and go back to the cabin for now. Cass wants to hunt this evening, so Laney and Dad might pick it up tonight. If they don't, we'll just try to find it tomorrow morning. Nothing else we can do, or tomorrow afternoon. So we'll see. What's up y'all? I had a few people um, ask me about the deer that I posted, the shot that I posted on my story today. Did not recover him, don't know how. Um, if you'll go back and look at the, at the shot that I posted on my story, I don't know how he made it 50 yards, let alone 400 or wherever, whatever we're at at this point, 500, I don't know. As soon as I got out of my tree today, I looked at the arrow, the arrow had good blood on it. I trailed, trailed the blood for like 20 yards. Um, but I didn't see him fall. And anytime I don't see the deer fall, I don't like to go after them. 
So I waited, waited like four hours, gave the deer four hours, okay? And then we picked up the blood trail, trailed him 300 yards, bumped him today. After trailing him about 300 yards, we bumped him. That was about 1230 today. Um, and then we just came back, me, Cass, Laney, and Dad just came try to find him. And I don't know. I've been, we've walked all these ridges, haven't bumped him, haven't seen him, no blood. I don't know what I think happened. Of course, it's all speculation now, but quartering away shots are, are good shots, but there's a, there's a point to where they're quartering away too hard. And I think that's what the case was. If you go back and look at the story, go look at the shot. All you deer hunters will know he was quartered away a little bit too hard, but I was confident in my shot. So I shot and I hit where I wanted to hit. I think I hit the right side lung and I think it even came out the right side of his chest maybe. I don't know. I don't I don't know. It's just aggravating, bro. I even had Cass braid my hair so I could have like good luck. So the braid did not help. So now it's just wait, listen for crows, watch for buzzards. Yeah, I don't ever like to wound animals, but it's part of bow hunting. It happens. Good, good thing is, you know, I think he's going to die if he's not already dead. We've probably walked past him 20 times, but I think he's going to die. Hopefully I can find his at least his antlers in the next couple of days and get him European mounted. But he's not going to be spreading those six-point genes around. He's a big buck, like a big six-point. So he's not going to be spreading those six-point genes around. And it wasn't a, like a, at least it wasn't one of our big target bucks. So it's not a complete bummer, but it still sucks. So that's the update. Didn't find him. I'm still going to make a video out of it because I promised myself I was going to show the good, bad, and ugly this year. This is the bad and ugly. So, no bueno. Guys, as always, one more time, we want to say thank you so much for watching today's video. Whether you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook, do us a favor, share this video. If you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. Wherever you're watching, just let us know that you like what you've seen, if you did like what you see. Uh, we've got some more videos rolling out here pretty quick. Um, Cass gets one on the ground. We finally get a deer on the ground this year. Cass gets it done. So we'll be popping that video out to you here pretty quick. But we want to say thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on 40 Outdoors. Peace out.